In chapter 15, section 5, we're talking about the fundamental counting principles, and this is addressing state standards for Algebra 2, the probability and statistics standards 1. Students need to know the notion of independent events and can use the rules for addition, multiplication, and complementation to solve for probabilities of particular events in finite sample spaces. Now, what I would like to do for a moment is consider the possibility of ordering a pizza. And in this particular case, I would like to suggest that maybe we're going to look at possible pizza combinations where we have four choices of crusts, flat crust, thick crust, cheese in the crust, or New York style crust. We have three choices of a meat topping, ham, pepperoni, or sausage, I'm trying to keep things simple here. Five choices of a non-meat topping, pineapples, peppers, onions, mushrooms, anchovies. And if we list that, and I will give you a little preview here with four, three, and five choices, we're going to end up with 60 possibilities. Now that'll take a while to list them all, so I've invoked the use of a computer program. And here's what we have, our pizza choices. We have flat crust with ham and pineapples, flat crust ham and peppers, flat crust ham and onions, flat crust ham and mushrooms, flat crust ham and anchovies. And we've exhausted the flat crust ham options, so we move on to the flat crust pepperoni options, flat crust sausage options. And then you can see we just continue to list all the options until we're done with all the flat crusts. We're going to look at all the thick crust options, which goes back to the ham choices with pineapples, peppers, onions, mushrooms, anchovies, etc., etc. We get thick crust with all the pepperoni and all the veggies, thick crust with all the sausage and all the veggies. Then we list all the cheese in the crust options. Cheese in the crust with ham and all the non-meat toppings. Cheese in crust with pepperoni and other non-meat toppings. Cheese in crust with sausage, etc. All the way through the New York choices. So there's our list, and what we notice is that we've got some combinations. And so in certain situations where we considered combinations of items, which could be a succession of events, like flips of a coin, drawing of cards from a deck, choosing pizza crust, toppings, or meats. Each particular result is called an outcome. An event is a subset of outcomes. One drawing of the card, one flip of the coin, one choice of the pizza crust. And when several events occur, occur together, like choosing a card followed by choosing a second card, or like our example, choosing a pizza crust followed by choosing a meat topping, and then of course followed by choosing a non-meat topping, we have what we call a compound event. And in a compound event, the fundamental counting principle comes to play. In a compound event where the first event may occur n sub 1 ways, the second event can occur n sub 2 ways, etc., the kth event would occur in n sub k different ways, the total number of ways for the compound event to occur is by multiplying all those choices as we go. n sub 1 times n sub 2 times n sub 3, etc. through n sub k. So as we look at that compound fundament, uh, fundamental counting principle, I'm sorry, let's look at it, applying it to this problem, trying to make it a little bit more simple than the pizza one. How many odd two-digit whole numbers are there that are less than 70? Well, two-digit numbers implies the fact that we've got a tens digit and a ones digit. And if it's less than 70, the tens digit has to be chosen from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, not 0, because then it wouldn't be a two-digit whole number. And it can't be 7, because it can't be equal to 70. It says less than. So that gives us six possibilities, six different ways in way the first event may occur. Six choices, so to speak, also, if we look at it like that. Now, for the ones digit, it says it must be an odd number. So that rules out, obviously, the even numbers and leaves us with 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. And there are five choices of odd numbers. So if we now have a compound event, we chose a tens digit. We are now choosing a ones digit. Fundamental counting principle says to multiply those results together. And 5 times 6 is 30. So there are 30 two-digit odd whole numbers less than 70. And that's using the fundamental counting principle. Now to look at something different, <coughs> a little bit, we have something we call mutually exclusive choices. So when you go to school, you can walk or arrive by car. Hopefully you're not walking inside the car. 
So that would be called a mutually exclusive choice. You're doing one or the other. You cannot do both of them at the same time. If we take the possibilities being counted and we can group them into mutually exclusive cases, we find the m number of possibilities by the sum, by adding together the number of possibilities for each case. So let's illustrate that looking at this example, which again is a nice simple numerical example. And how many positive integers less than 100 can be written using the digits 6, 7, 8, 9? Now, less than 100, <coughs> we can have a two-digit number, or we can have one-digit numbers. And that gives us two mutually exclusive cases. It cannot be a one-digit number and a two-digit number at the same time. It's either one or the other. So we're going to find the result or outcome for each one of these mutually exclusive cases and then add the results together. So let's consider the ones digit case. We have a choice of six, seven, eight, or nine. And then we're going to consider the two digits case. We have a choice of six, seven, eight, or nine for the tens and six, seven, eight, or nines for the ones. So let's come back to the ones digit case. We only can choose from six, seven, eight, or nine, so there are four possible choices. For the two-digit case, we can have a 6, 7, 8, or 9, which again is four choices for the tens units. But a two-digit number, as we just saw in example one, is a compound event. So we could have 6, 7, 8, or 9 for the ones digit, which is again four choices. And we would say, well, totally for one digit, there's only four cases. But for the two digits, there's four times four, or 16 possibilities. Since they are mutually exclusive, we need to take the sum of 4 and 16. And to answer the question, there are 20 positive integers less than 100, only using the digits 6, 7, 8, or 9. So let's continue on this pursuit. How many ID tags can be made using three symbols? And those symbols will include letters of the alphabet. There's, of course, 26 of those choices in the English alphabet and digits where there's only 10 of them, 0 through 9. And you must have at least one letter in each. Well, here's a possibility where there's a one letter case. And let's put that A to Z. And then we've got two digits, so that's 0 through 9, 0 through 9. There are 26 choices to choose from, from the letters of the alphabet in the English language. So that's 26. 10 choices for numerals 0 through 9, 10 more choices for numerals 0 through 9, and we multiply because it's a compound event. 26 times 10 times 10 is 2,600 possible ID tags that can be made using those three symbols. However, what we haven't considered is since each of these is unique, the letter of the alphabet may not be in the first place of the three symbols. What if it's in the second place? So we have 10, 26, 10, another 2,600. Or what if the letter of the alphabet is at the end? We have 10, 10, 26, another 2,600 choices. So all together, if we have one letter of the alphabet, we've got three possibilities of where that letter is going to go, first choice, second choice, or third choice. So 3 times 2,600 is 7,800 possible one-letter ID tags. What if we have two letters of the alphabet? Well, A to Z in the first position, A to Z in the second position, possibly. That would be 26 times 26. 0 through 9 in the third place, that would be 10. So 26 times 26 times 10 is 6,760. But that digit could occur in the second place or the first place in addition to the last place. So where that digit occurs, there are three possibilities. So we need to take 3 times 6,760, and there are 20,280 possible ID tags using two letters of the alphabet. However, we have another scenario. What if we're using all three letters of the alphabet, because it says at least one letter in each. So that doesn't guarantee that we have to have a numeral. So again, that would be 26 choices times 26 choices times 26 choices. That's 17,576. And there's no other possible scenario because all three are letters there. So yes, if we use three letter ID tags, no numerals, there are 17,576. These are all mutually exclusive cases. 
either a case with one letter of the alphabet or two letters of the alphabet or three letters of the alphabet. So we need to find the sum of all these red numbers here. 7,800 plus 20,280 plus 17,576 tells us there are 45,656 possible combinations or possible ID tags that can be used three symbols with at least one letter in each possible scenario. And you could think of that as passwords as well if you had a password that used letters and numerals and it was only three symbols. So imagine if you had a password with six symbols, or seven, the possible passwords we have. All right, and that's our look at uh, compound events and mutually exclusive events.